In this video, we'll be taking a look at cross-validation. Recall how in machine learning, our goal is to predict new incoming data. And for that reason, we have to make sure that our model doesn't overfit uh, to our training data. And so what we end up doing is we end up splitting the data into a training and a test set. And then once our model is finished training, before we use it in production, we'll make sure that it still has a reasonable accuracy on the test set. Now, certain algorithms will have hyperparameters, and hyperparameters, in essence, are values that are selected by the data scientist or whoever is creating the model. And the algorithm that we'll take a look at in this video is called ridge regression. So essentially, we describe how well a model fits our data by the term bias. And so if it fits it really well, then it will have a high bias. But if it doesn't fit it well at all, then it will have a really low bias. And then we call variance. Essentially, it's how well it does on a completely new data set. And so the way ridge regression works is that it will add a, it will use a hyperparameter called alpha and essentially alpha will add a bias. And so what this bias will do is it'll essentially prevent our model from really fitting well to our training data. And as a consequence, it will have a better variance. And so it will, you know, it, it might not um, have such a high accuracy on our training set, but it will have a better accuracy on our testing set because it wouldn't have uh, overfitted to our training set. And so that, I think that's enough background information. So let's get right into the code. Give me a second here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is import all our libraries. So we're gonna use sklearn datasets, and we're going to import the load Boston dataset because this will be a regression problem. And we, from the linear model, we're going to import ridge cross validation, and then from sklearn.model selection, we're going to import the train test split. We're going to import numpy. We're going to import pandas. And then we're going to import matplotlib. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and load our data set. And we're going to create a pandas data frame. With this data. Okay, next, um, we're just gonna take a look at a single feature to make this um, simpler. And so the feature we're going to be looking at is the number of rooms. And I'm going to have to reshape this so that it works correctly. And then our target is going to be the house price. And I made a mistake here. So now let's go ahead and visualize the data. So we can do that using matplotlib. So scatter 
x, y. And we'll go ahead and give it a title. So this is going to be the Boston house prices. And then our x values is going to be the average number of rooms per dwelling. As I mentioned before, our Y level label is going to be the house prices. And then go ahead and take a look at that. So we can see here that I know it's kind of faint, but you can kind of tell that there is a correlation, which makes sense, right? The more rooms you have in a house, the higher the price. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and split our data into the training and test sets. And then I'm giving it a random state so that um, we get the same value. All right, so in essence, the reason why we want to use cross validation is because if I use the test set in order to tune my hyperparameters, so if I go ahead and I'm trying um, ridge regression with different values for the alpha. And every single time I'm measuring the performance using the test set, well, the model will begin to develop an affinity for our test set. And essentially, it will um, basically like learn from it as if it were part of the training set so that when you actually bring this model into production, um, it was actually overfitting to the entire da data set. And so um, normally we would create a validation set. And um, the reason why we would use cross validation instead of, you know, uh, splitting up or putting another um, amount of data aside, so let's say like a validation X or whatever, is because um, it takes such a large portion of our data. And the more data we have, the better, right? The more data we have to train our models, the better. And so the way cross validation works is it will um, it will set aside a portion of the data and it will perform multiple iterations and uh, let me I'll show you guys an image just so this is more clear so essentially it's gonna split up our training data into multiple folds so this is called kfold cross-validation, and then it will always use one of these folds as our validation set, and the rest will be used for training. And once we're satisfied with the result, then we'll compare it to our test data. And so going back to our example here, we are going to create a regressor, and this is going to be rich cross-validation. And let's define a few alpha values. And so for alpha values, we'll use, excuse me, 1, 1,000, and then 1 million. And so we can go ahead and specify that. And then we're also going to want to specify or tell it to store the cross validation values. So next, we're going to go ahead and train it. And 
and then we're going to want to store the mean square error for all of our um, different alpha values. Okay, and then let's take a look at this here. Okay, so essentially it used threefold cross validation and it tried using the ridge regression algorithm with a hyperparameter value, which is our alpha of one, 1,000 and one million. And for a value of one, it got a mean square error of 43. And then for 1,000, it got it a mean square error of 73. And then for 1 million, it got 85. And it will automatically choose the best one here. So it selected one because uh, we want to pick the lowest number there. And so if I do a prediction, or I try and predict the values in the test set, and then if I go back here, change this to x, change this to y, and then we're also going to add the line here. probably because it's color. There we go. Okay, so you can see how it uh, it's basically comparable to linear regression because the alpha value is so low. But for example, let's say if I just left it to 1 million, and then we tried this again. Well, you can see now that it tried to reduce the bias as much as it could. And basically the lowest bias is actually the mean. And so you can imagine no matter where the, the data ends up, um, it will get the same result because it has the same mean.